joined with Dev Randhawa from F3 Uranium. Dev, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me on. So uh, uranium, it's one of those things, it's got a little bit of volatility in terms of investor sentiment. One day uranium is the bee's knees, the next day nobody really seems to care that much. But I gotta say, there was recently some pretty big news here with the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. They set out to raise 100, they ended up raising 200. Uh, what's happening in the uranium market right now? Well, exactly that. Um, you know, there are there are cycles, definitely. And there are, over the summer, there's not much contracting goes on. So spot price tends to go down a bit. But as we get closer to uh, September, you'll see it entirely different. It starts to move back up. As we get closer to WNA, the contracting picks up, the spot price picks up. But, but you know what? It hasn't, right now, the love has gone to precious metals, right? So right now, silver and gold getting a lot of love. For many, and there was a couple of years where we were getting the love and they weren't, right? So contrarian investors, like Rick, this, this is all about Rick, this conference. If one thing I learned, I've been doing 1996, is it's you're contrarian or you're a victim. And so and if, if things are out of favor, that's the time to buy them as long as they've got cash, good management, good assets, right? So you're right. And so it was, but um, the, it's because first of all, when you got people like uh, Meta, um, Amazon um, and others out there buying and contracting and making sure they got enough power for from for AI. So we need a lot more energy going forward, whether it's electric vehicles, crypto. We need energy, ideally clean energy and baseload energy, meaning we can turn it up and down. The problem with renewables, you can't tell the sun to you know, uh, shine longer and you can't tell the wind to blow. So you need base load because, and, and for a lot of us people don't realize we use most of our power between five o'clock and nine o'clock at night. So it's, unless we're gonna tell people, you know, eat at three o'clock in the morning, we need to be have base load power and clean power. And that's what r nuclear does. One small SMR can um, take care of 500,000 homes, one small SMR. So it, we need more energy and, I, I believe uh, nuclear power should be a part of that. And everybody's recognizing it, even the, whether you're in California, leaving the reactors on, um, even Germany, I call it the California of Europe of mistakes. They went to renewables and wasted a trillion dollars. And never got, for example, in Germany, they were gonna build 3,900 kilometers of connection. They spent the trillion, built 39, not 10%, 1% of their goal after spending a trillion dollars because it's folly, but it looks good to get votes, but it doesn't work in real life. So needless to say, you, you're, you're under the belief that uh, we're about to see a massive boom in nuclear power and uh, the idea that uh, one or two mines coming online could uh, take care of supply is, is a misguided thought. I, yeah, because first of all, look at the US. Um, they needed 50 million pounds last year. What did they produce? A few hundred thousand? Yeah. Despite all that, because the cost of doing business is much higher than people think. But even if uranium went to back to 100, 200, it's a very small part of running a nuclear plant. It's only three to 5%. So it's, it's not a big deal to, if uranium keep going higher, it's very inelastic. Um, People have to have it. That's the end of the story. And obviously some of the administrations have recognized that. That's what they're trying to make in Canada. They're talking about um, bringing down the time from discovery to permitting. They're trying to bring that. I'll say in the U.S. administration's doing it. So you're seeing people waking up and realizing if we want AI to continue, we need energy. And they're doing what they can to permit some of these mines. So there's not enough. We need a new cigar lake every year coming online for what's happening. Between now and 2035, uh, there's like 3 billion pounds of uranium that have not been contracted. That means there's, they need it, but they know they, it's not like gold where you don't know how much you need. It's easy with the reactors because when they're built, they need uh, you know, half a million pounds, a million pounds a year. Okay, we know that. But we know exactly how many pounds you need, unlike gold and silver. So it's not that hard to predict. So we know we need a lot of uranium. The question is, when do these utilities get off their butt and start contracting? So it's the last time we've had you on here. Uh, sorry, since the last time we had you on here, uh, that was back in April of 2024. Uh, the story's changed a bit, I imagine. 
um, give us the high level overview, refresh us on F3 uranium. Well, F3 uranium, we had at the time one discovery, the JR zone, and we're still working along the conductor, see where it grows. But the PLN property is very big. And we just announced that we had made a new discovery um, uh, about two months ago. The assays came out yesterday and we found out that we've got over a, a one meter of two and a half percent uranium. That's good. And so that's a good start um, to a new area. So I would say now we've got two areas that we know have uranium. The question is how big are they going to be? And that's what we're working on right now. It's, it's like we've got the tail of something. We don't know what it belongs to. And so that's our goal. It will be um, working on brooch and on the JR zone. So you guys raised $7 million uh, back in May. What are the funds going to be used towards? straight into the ground. <laughs> These are large properties, and but the nice thing is the location of them. They're near Aero, they're near Next Gen Zero, they're near Paladin's Triple R, you know, and again, what we have going for us, few others do, and not many people find one discovery in the Athabasca. Not many found two. We're on our fourth. So we have not only, if you go back in our past, Fission Energy was spun out from Strathmore, a company I started in my basement. That, we made a discovery with the help of the Korean Electric Power Company, who sold that to Lucas Lundin and a uh, late Lucas Lundin and Denison. Um, then we made another discovery on the other side of the basin. That was sold to Paladin. That sold for $1.1 billion at Christmas. So we've been able to make discoveries, build them, and sell them. Very few people have been able to do that. So there's also a recent spin out, I see, uh, F4 Uranium. How's that transaction turned out? What can you tell us? Well, I mean, we did it at the top of the market. And I, I think, obviously, um, the market has gone soft. A lot of the juniors, a lot of the money has gone to precious metals, as I mentioned. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it looks like we're working on two joint ventures for it. Um, it's very uh, well endowed property wise. It's uh, 17 projects, 100% owned. Um, not many people own that many properties, a hundred percent. There are a lot of companies that are earning to earn into an option. So this is a, it's, um, it's got, I think $3 million in the till coming up. And so it's not, it's enough funding to start geophysics and things like that, but it's more of a project generator model. So we're looking for joint venture partners to be in it. So that's our next step. Okay, uh, last question for you here, Dev. Um, last year I, I, I met you, I don't know if we had you on last year, but um, I'm sure next year we're gonna find ourselves here and uh, we'll be sitting uh, doing an interview and I'm gonna ask you, uh, was it a successful year? What does success look like over the next 12 months for you to be sitting here this time next year telling me that it was a success? I would say building out the JR zone or uh, finding, finding a, a large deposit. If we can get to 50 million pounds, I mean, that kind of number by next year would be a real success. We need to find a lot more uranium. Uh, to make it into a large. I mean, um, and I'm, that's why I, th I think the magic number in our business has always been about 50, 50 million pounds. You've got enough to go into a mine. The nice thing here is we are so close to those other big assets that they're going to build mills. In fact, one of them just got a next gen, I think, just going to build a, a strip uh, for airstrip and a mill they'll be building. So that's a good thing because when you've got mills and strips nearby, it makes it easier to take your deposits into mines as well. You don't have to build a mill. Okay, well, Dev, thanks so much for hopping on here today. It's a pleasure to well, thanks to for having up. me. And uh, I hope you have a successful 12 months. <laughs> and uh, let's, let's do this again this time next year. Absolutely, thank you for having me on.